Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Blake from Web Canopy Studio. Um, this is the Web Canopy Studio show. So today we're talking email sending domains and how you can go ahead and connect those in HubSpot. So today I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. So what you're looking at right here is uh, I'm in the Web Canopy Studio test portal, just one of our test uh, environments here. Um, to start, I'm just going to click on this HubSpot icon, get me to kind of this home page. Uh, again, you can really be on any page in your HubSpot portal, not a big deal. Uh, to get to email sending domains, to go ahead and connect those, you're going to want to find this settings icon, this gear icon up here. If you click on that, you'll see a bunch of settings right through here. What you're going to be looking for is... Uh, if you scroll all the way down under tools, you'll see a couple options here. They might all be collapsed for you. Under tools, you'll see content. Go ahead and pop out that content menu. You'll see domains and URLs. So if you click into this, um, you might have some other options here. You might already have a domain connected. You might not, uh, but let's go ahead and take a look here. So if you scroll through this, you'll see some, some different options. Maybe if you've got a brand domain or two in here, primary domains, secondary domains, redirected domains, and lastly, what we're talking about today, email sending domains. So this is important because uh, if you're sending marketing emails through HubSpot, you want to make sure that your email sending domain is verified and that HubSpot's not being treated as some third-party source. You actually are showing your, uh, your verifying ownership of the domain you're sending from, from HubSpot to make sure that you're not getting caught up in any funky spam filters or anything like that. Um, the verification process is, is needed and uh, HubSpot's been pushing, requiring and authenticating your domains. So I wanna show you how to do this. And to start, what you'll do is you'll go ahead and click on connect an email sending domain here. So when you start here, it's gonna ask you, type one of the email addresses that you use to send marketing emails. Uh, this actually is not gonna really matter later in the process, just everything after the at symbol, that's what matters. So like if it's at webcanopystudio.com or uh, at web canopy email, whatever that might be. Um, I typically can either use Blake at, or for my purposes, I always just use info at web canopy studio.com here. Um, so I don't show any records that we need. I'm going to go ahead and just put a test email in here. So info at web canopy studio test.com. Uh, and then you'll go ahead and click next. When you do that, it's going to say your emails will be sent out from, and this is what I meant. It doesn't really matter what you put in here. It's really just looking for that last piece of your email. Uh, you'll be able to change this, update this, edit this, how you see fit when you're actually sending your emails. So now we've kind of got this. Everything looks good here. We'll go ahead and click next. And this is kind of where things get a little more technical. Um, if you've connected your regular domain to HubSpot already, uh, great. Awesome. You, this is probably looks familiar to you. Uh, but what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pull up your DNS provider, whether that be GoDaddy or HostGator, or whatever that might be. Um, because we're going to have to put in some, some DNS records here. So there's really three parts of an email sending domain that you need to connect. Um, after you pull up your DNS settings, uh, you'll need to update your DNS records. The three records that you need for verifying your email sending domain is a DKIM record, an SPF record, and a DMARC record or a DMARC policy you may know it as. Um, in your DNS provider, uh, you'll go to your DNS zone editor, zone editor, your DNS manager, and you'll go ahead and add these new records. If you have existing records that are for this, uh, this might already pre-populate with like the current data or something like that. If you do have these already in here, a um, couple things to note: the DKIM records. These record types are there's two C name records you need to put in. So when you add a DNS record, it's going to ask you for the record type. You'll go ahead and select C name. Um, then for the host, uh, it, it'll either say host or name for you. Either or, uh, those are synonymous here. Um, you'll just go ahead and click copy, copy this value here. Can I, can I expand this here? Hopefully I can, uh, maybe I can't, but you can go ahead and click copy. There's a couple of records here, uh, current data, nothing here, and then required data. So there's a host in required data field, just like any other DNS record. It could also be called name and value. Um, those are usually the, the terms that I see most frequently. 
Uh, there also might be something on your DNS provider called TTL or time to live. I always recommend cranking that down to the lowest TTL, just so this says it estimates five to 10 minutes, just so the, the cache on the DNS servers is as low as possible to provide a quick turnaround time. So for DKIM, you'll add in a CNAME record and another CNAME record. So you add both of these, you can see they're a little different. It usually for HubSpot is an HS1 and an HS2. Uh, so you'll add in those two CNAMEs, the names, the required data or the value. SPF record, this one's a little bit different. Uh, it's a text record. So it's not a C name, it's a text record. The host will just be an at symbol here. If you have current data, you've got this here. So what you might notice is this has V equals SPF include all this jargon that you're seeing here. For the SPF record specifically, it you likely have an SPF record already on your domain. I shouldn't say likely, but you very well might. If you do, the key to this one is actually not completely replacing the record. It's taking this SPF record and appending it to your existing record. So for example, if you already have an SPF record, it'll have this V equals SPF one already and probably this dash all at the end. So you'll actually append this to your current one. So maybe it's Google Sites, it's V equals SPF one, Google Sites, bunch of numbers, dash all. Your new one would be V equals SPF one, Google Sites with a bunch of numbers. You'd put a space and then you just copy in this include statement from HubSpot here before the final dash all. So this is an appending a record to an existing record likely if you already have one that exists. If you don't have one that exists, you can go ahead and just copy this at face value that we're seeing here. Uh, but that's kind of the one tricky one of, of these here is you do need to append this to your existing record if you have one. You don't do a full replace because the reason being is your other SPF records that are relying on this would be removed if you just did a full replace. You want to add this to what's already there. The last one here is a DMARC record. This also is a text record. Uh, this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, record type is a text record. Host, current data, required data, and you should be good to go. So again, this could also be name. This could also be value. Uh, if you have anything here, you'll see this. But again, this is what you'll need to add to your existing record. So I hope this has been helpful. When you're done, you'll click verify. Obviously, I didn't put any of these records in because the Web Canopy Studio testing domain is not going to show here. Um, when you scroll down here, it will tell you which piece doesn't work if you add it in. So because there's three records, it'll say, hey, the DKIM is not connected. SPFs doesn't include HubSpot and there's no DMARC policy. If for some reason uh, you get these, just double check what you put into your DNS settings uh, and then click, you can actually go click on continue domain setup. It'll probably try to verify it again, but if it doesn't, it'll pop up, say it's not verified. You can go back into here and click check again. It'll check. Again, this could take five to 10 minutes, depending on your TTL, depending on your DNS provider. Um, it says can take up to 70 minutes, full disclosure. I've never seen it take 70 minutes. Uh, usually it is pretty quick, sometimes even instantaneously. When these are all connected, you'll have, this will turn green, this little gray dot not authenticated, it'll turn green and it'll say authenticated. These will all have green checks next to them and you'll be all good to go. If it's only partially authenticated, this will turn yellow, it'll say partially authenticated and maybe your DKIM and your DMARC are checked off green and your SPF still has an X next to it. So again, it is gonna perform a check on each one of these individual pieces. And from there, when you have this green authenticated right here, uh, you're all good to go. Your email sending domains verified from HubSpot. You can easily send marketing emails without having to worry about your domains not being authenticated, emails getting caught up in spam at least for the technical reasons. Um, and from there, you should be all good to go. So I hope this has been helpful. I tried to be as thorough as we possibly can. Uh, and 
Hopefully this will bring you some success, give you a little bit more insight onto how you connect your email sending domain to HubSpot uh, and more so why it's important so you can use the marketing email tools without any worry. So thanks again. It's been Blake from Web Canopy Studio. This is the Web Canopy Studio show and hope you have a great day.